Hi everyone, it's Braylon and welcome back to my channel. Um, this video is long overdue. It's something that I've really been wanting to film for a while now and I've just not been able to figure out when and honestly just have the energy to do it. So I finally decided to do it today. And what I wanna do is I wanna go through the slides in my classroom and talk about the structure of the day. I've had um, videos like maybe a year, a year and a half ago, I posted a video of my classroom schedule and I went through each component and kind of what it's like in my classroom. And then I've had videos like different vlogs where I've mentioned elements of my schedule but the way that my classroom operates is by a slideshow, by Google Slides. And the reason it's um, Google Slides is because I share it with staff. So if I'm ever out, then they can keep following the structure of the day. And also, um, I also have timers going off in the classroom. So everything like stays the same day to day, um, no matter who's there. I thought I would take you through the day, just show you some of the slides, some of the products that I use for Google um, Slides. And I'm gonna link them down below. I firmly believe that um, if you wanna do this or you wanna have your classroom run this way, a little bit more visual, um, it's not a good thing or a bad thing, it's just the way that my brain operates, but if you want to do something like this, you do not have to honestly pay much at all. Google's free, right? Like Google Slides are free. Obviously, like I'm showing you what works for me and if things work better for you, then please use those, okay? Um, but this is just what has been the most effective in my classroom, so. We're gonna buckle up and we're gonna go through everything. And if there are big gray spots in the middle, it's because I'm blocking people's photos. So I'm blocking student photos or um, like my staff or my coworkers. They don't wanna be on the internet and I'm not gonna put them on the internet. So it is what it is. The first part of the slideshow is my morning meeting because that's the first thing that we do. And I made this really simple schedule for morning meeting in Smarty Symbols. I've talked about them a bunch of times. I have a subscription. It's kind of like Board Maker, but it's um, web-based and um, it's really easy to use and they have really good representation. <laughs> Oh, they have good representation for skin color. So the first one um, is the whole schedule. So we start with a greeting and I like this hello song um, from YouTube that I inserted into Google Slides. And then we start by saying hello. And this hello slide is from Simply Special Ed. I bought um, her morning meeting pack that is Google Slides based. I use some elements of it, but this part is just from her. Obviously use what you wanna use. Um, and then we move on to the calendar. And we used to use the Simply Special Ed calendar slides, but my students um, progressed so much that I decided to switch to Simply, um, oh sorry, Adulting Made Easy, which is like a little higher level. So instead of having symbols for the days of the week, it's just the words. So I'm trying to like up the ante. So we do the days, we do like the actual day date. Um, it, right now it's January, 2020. We write the date, so I'll write it out um, on this slide and then I'll have two kids come up and um, write on my whiteboard because this projects to my whiteboard. I forgot to mention that. We talk about January. We always um, listen to a January song or a month song. Then we get into the weather and the same thing. This is from Adulting Made Easy. So it's like, instead of um, real images of the weather. Now I'm switching to like more stylized images so that if they're watching the weather channel or whatever, they're not always gonna see real pictures. And so we're kind of just um, moving away from younger grades to more higher level stuff. We talk about the temperature and this one actually has a thermometer in the slide and that's been really good. Um, again, it's um, adulting made easy. And then we get into a movement. Honestly, I went online and um, took a screenshot of like an exercise choice board. And so we choose an exercise each day. Um, and then we always practice our information in morning meetings. So I asked them what the name of their school is and there's a picture of the school and the words. And so whether students have a device or um, they're able to speak with their mouth, they'll say, um, I go to this school and so we practice that so that when they get asked that question in real life they can answer it um and then I always ask them what their teacher's name is so that they can recognize me and the other staff that's working with them um we usually read some sort of story um but I'll have the book I don't have it on the slides it'll be like a book in my hand and it's never very long and if we do read a story it's a picture book and it's only a couple pages just to get them to participate 
And then um, this month we've been practicing counting past 100. Some of them have it, some of them don't, but they need to keep working on that. So I um, added that in to the slideshow and then I took a screenshot of like a hundreds chart and we've been practicing counting up by tens, back by tens, by one, starting at a random number and counting up three. Those are skills that they really need and they each have their own um, hundreds charts at their desk. So that's another thing we've been practicing. We always talk about emotions, how you're feeling. And again, I went from the real pictures that they mastered to these um, pictures. And then uh, starting probably in March, I'm going to switch to just words so that it's not as, um, yeah, it's a little harder for them to do. And I always ask them like what they ate for breakfast. I have some other slides that are like, what did you eat last night for dinner? What did you do over the weekend with some pictures? Just to get some conversation, even if it's a minimal conversation. And then we do a closing, and this slide is also from Simply Special Ed, but honestly, I I think I'm gonna switch it out soon and just make like a list of the songs and go from there. Um, then we take a 10 minute break to go to the bathroom, um, like do movement, whatever, and then we start in on the next thing, which is math. This slide, um, some of these slides are from Maylene Call, Mrs. Call's Campers. She's an amazing person and I bought her slideshow and I love it. And so I, a lot of the slides you'll see after this, especially the headings and some of the simpler slides, I um, use from her pack. She has it on Teachers Pay Teachers and it's in PowerPoint, but I just kind of um, imported it to Google Slides. So then I made, um, well, when it's presented, it doesn't look like this, but sorry, everyone. Um, then I put the schedule of what we do for each subject. So we always start with a song. So this song is talking about halves because we're talking about fractions in math. We start with like a whole group. And then there's this fraction book of whole and half that we are um, looking at. This is a YouTube video I found. So again, most of these things free. You don't even need the special decks or the special... Um, slides you can just do it for free um, and then after we do the song we look at the words or the definitions of things and so um, we're talking about fractions this is from teach to tell I just took screenshots of a pdf that I bought from teachers pay teachers um, so half whole and we go through that um, and then we keep uh, we're practicing writing it on the board again. I also, obviously it's not in the slideshow, but we do like a sorting activity. I made this also for free. So I found pictures of half items and whole looking items. And then I took two pieces of paper. One paper says half, one paper says whole. They had to cut out the pictures and not even glue, just put them either in the half section or the whole section because we're starting fractions. Um, and then for the book, instead of the book, we kind of did this activity. Um, this is from a boom card deck that I also took screenshots of. So again, if you have free boom card decks, just take screenshots of what you've got. And they had to um, work with this. And then I went to boom and we did more practice. And then I projected this picture on the board and kids had to come up and with an expo marker cut the apple in half and then they had to cut the groups in half. Um, so this is the practice and it seems silly but every day we do the same thing so we're going through it. So that's the chunk of the day and then at the end the last one of the last things we do is table work or the groups and so these are the three teachers that are there uh, me and my two paraprofessionals have covered up the faces of the students but you can kind of see remnants of their pictures um, underneath each name will be two or three kids photos and so even students who are a little less verbal they can see their their face and they know which table they're going to because um, the tables are also labeled one two and three so we're getting much more independent with um, finding our groups and the groups stay the same for the whole week so that gives a little consistency then we have a break and trade in and then we have recess so again i'll project the recess slide and that will clue the students to be like oh time for recess so then we one at a time line up get the jacket go outside or um, have indoor recess then we come back and have snack. And again, this is from Maylene Call. This is a beautiful slide. Um, sometimes I'll put a little YouTube video underneath here or I'll write directions on the board underneath the word snacks. That's why this is kind of empty. Um, I want to add pictures of like, you know, opening your snack and sitting down like some, maybe some PEX pictures. Then we get into literacy after snack and it's the same format. So the same slide of first we have the song, we're talking about parts of speech or parts of a sentence. We've been doing nouns and verbs for a while. Um, 
And then we're going to do the words that so we practiced. Um, we have a sort that's not on the slideshow of what is a noun, what is a verb. So that was um, tangible. And then we are going to get into practicing looking for chunks of a sentence. Now, this is huge. I teach first grade through fourth grade, and the fourth graders that I have have been with me for a couple years, and um, they have a more significant needs. And so um, getting to this point where they're looking through sentences and they can I can point to a word and with their device they can tell me it's a noun or a verb is huge and so I want them to feel like they're a part of a class so that's why I picked this slide um and I put noun in green and verb in purple because I have a green marker and a purple marker so people can come up to the board and they can circle the nouns with the green and they can circle the verbs with the purple. So I have two sentences here and I put little images on top of the words just to help. Um, and then we um, read a book together like we read in a read aloud book um, so they can move and sit on the rug instead of being at their desks. Um, and then we move around, they get some silent reading time. So I put this slide up, real simple, real basic. Um, and I start the timer and they can go to bean bags or whatever. And then after they've, you know, done the work that was hard as a whole group, had a little bit of a break. Now we get into the groups again. So again, they go with the staff into their groups and they know exactly where to go to do their specific work. Now the work that they're doing in those small groups isn't necessarily related to verbs or nouns. Um, the whole group lesson is more as a exposure and hitting certain goals. Um, but when they're in their small group is when they're gonna do their specific IEP work. So then it's time for lunch. And so I have the lunch slide up. Because of COVID, we've been eating lunch in the classroom, but if it's different, then they would go to the cafeteria depending on their grade level. Um, so we make sure the lunch, we get the lunch, go through the line, come back to the classroom. If you have a, um, a lunch from home, you know, do what you need to do. And they sit and they usually listen to music or listen to a read aloud on YouTube or something. A break for iPad, but I realize I can't show you the iPad slide because it has students' names on it. Then we have book club, and this is something I just started. There are a few students who need more phonics work, so you take like 20 minutes. So if you're in uh, my group, then you're working on foundation stuff, like review stuff for that you need for your foundation. And if you're in a different group, you're working on a higher level, maybe a novel that you get to read with the teacher together or um, a book, any kind of book. And I remember as a kid, I um, you know, had like reading groups and stuff and we were reading the same book together and it was fun to look at the cover and the chapters and stuff. So we kind of have this book club to kind of almost like remediation, like to catch up any little extra reading bits that I wasn't able to catch in the literacy block. And again, that's only 15 or 20 minutes. Then we have science. I didn't make these slides, the teacher across the hall did, so she shared them with me. So this is why they look a little different, but I love them so much. So we're talking about buoyancy and floating or sinking. So we always start with a song. It's the same structure. Um, we read a story together. Um, and then we do our sinker, float or sink book. Then we do some boom card decks. And then um, we go into our groups again. And I'm not going to show you that slide because I forgot to cover their faces. But it's too small. I can't really see any details. And then um, we have a sensory break to play. And that's the end of science. And sometimes in science we do like experiments. Like today we had a bucket of water to see if it sinks or floats and we kind of tested that out. Later this week we're gonna make a boat out of aluminum foil. Like we will do stuff after the reading time when we're in a small group doing some extra science work. So that does exist. Um, then we get into writing. We'll always take a break. Then we get into the next subject. So for writing it's the same thing. Usually um, we practice with some putty um, to work on their hands or uh, play-doh for five minutes and then they get into their groups and for writing they have a specific folder it's nothing fancy it might have tracing it might have cutting ripping um, working on sentences depending on where they are and what their goals are and they go to their group with the teacher and they work on their writing um, and then we have IEP work time and this is really important so we come back together and they either take a break or calm down. And I put this slide up and they have to go get their IEP bin. Every kid has a bin. Um, it's stuff that they've learned in either small groups or whole groups that are important to their IEP, but they need to um, keep everything there. It's stuff that they need to keep practicing after, almost like make sure it sticks. 
Um, so then um, they get their bin and then they go again back to their groups and sit there with the bin and that teacher will help them. A lot of it is like um, file folders and task boxes and anything Velcro, anything like dry erase. I made these dry erase like um, phonics binders. I made um, preschool related matching um, colors or sometimes it's just index card matching um, but it's things that they really need to make sure they keep mastering and that they keep uh, maintaining so we have that and then we have another recess so um, they'll clean up the IEP work with a timer and then they'll come back to their desks put this slide up so they know it's time to line up you know get your coat and go back outside and then we either have Gym, art, music, or dance, depending on the day, because Wednesdays for us are half days. So on this particular day, maybe we'd have gym. I covered up the gym teacher's name. And then we go into snack. Um, and so then after gym, they'll come back, they'll have a little final snack um, and a little break. And then it will be center time. And that center time is only like 15 or 20 minutes, but it's play centers at the end of the day. It's a time when I might have an IEP meeting because it's close to the end of the day when parents are more available after work um, or I might um, make a couple phone calls um, go to the bathroom stuff like that so we kind of have the centers in place so that they can um, still have something to do and play and sometimes we work on life skills skills during that center time so instead of just playing they play with the money or they pretend to shop or something like that and then we pack everything up and there's the timer again um, and then I have this slide with either a bus or a car and it has the students' names and or faces to tell them where to go and to line up. And then um, that's that and that's kind of the end. So I do want to say that I'm, I want to reiterate, I guess, again, just that it's not necessary for you to go and buy a bunch of slides and it's not necessary for you to even use this format. I just spent, you know, two or three years of my beginning at the beginning of my career, you know, having a timer kind of, but then things would run over and then it was like, where do we line up? What's the routine? And I really wanted to reinforce the routine. What happens when, when Miss Martin is not there? And then everything kind of goes awry. Oh, what was I supposed to do? What group was it in? Like, there's no like consistency, I think, when someone isn't there and there's not something as visual and I do believe that being in special ed things need to be visual for the teachers paras and the students and so this has just like saved us a lot of confusion and saved my students a lot of confusion and it's so consistent because it looks the same every day so um, even if I'm not there or I'm in a meeting which happens at least once a week that something happens I'm in a meeting for some period of the day they're still able to kind of continue along so obviously everyone is different and and teaches differently but I like highly highly recommend considering at least having slides for your um, small groups or having slides for um, different subjects where you can kind of um, have the schedule laid out so I don't know but I hope that something in this video was helpful I've always wanted to kind of show what this looks like and I'm glad that I got to show it and I think I want to also remember it for myself you know like every year I feel like I reinvent what I'm choosing to do so I want to make sure I have this saved too but you guys are the best and I hope that this video was helpful in some way and yeah I will see you in the next video Bye.